Hey everybody, so I'm coming to you from an undisclosed location off in the deep wilds and I wanted to show off some of what I've been working on lately with regard to, yeah you guessed it, pistons. So let's go downstairs and you can see here a fully functional piston based wheat and cactus farm. So uh, first let's show off the cactus farm. There is a lever down in the room below, which when pressed will generate delicious, delicious cactus. I have to wait a few seconds as they make their way downstream, but eventually Here we go. Cactus. You only get about two to four of them because cactus farms are very lossy endeavors in general. Um, so let me go back up here and show you how that works. It's pretty simple. Cactus can't grow adjacent to any other block. So if I were to put a block here next to this piston, then the cactus would not be able to grow past this point, and any cactus that was stacked on top would end up getting kicked off, hopefully into the water. If it gets tossed directly onto the cactus below it, it just gets destroyed. There's really not much you can do about that. Now, when I press this lever down here, all it's going to do is activate all of those pistons and push them forward. And as you can see now, this block is occupied, and so the cactus that was here has been kicked off and is either flowing downstream, oh, yep, there it goes, in true Minecraft glitchy fashion. But it's still collectible. I think. Yeah, there it goes. And you can leave this on. It's actually uh, an auto-harvester when it's in this state. So as the cactus grows, it'll just get tossed straight off and head down to the collection point. Or you can flip it off so that you don't waste any, and you're guaranteed to have a full harvest next time you come back. The wheat farm is a little bit more involved. Um, it's going to be hard to show you what happens um, because the switch is down here and the farm is up here, but I'll just say ahead of time, notice that, well, the farm is not covered in water, and these four pistons are extended, giving me a, a bridge to walk across. When I flip the switch, back up there as fast as I can, you should see that several things have changed. Accidentally harvesting some of it here, but most of it is making its way down to exactly the same collection point, which is kind of handy because you don't even have to come up here. You can just come straight down to this level of this level, flip both switches, and you're done. So here's all my stuff, and uh, eh, pretty decent yield. And then replanting is made easier by the fact that these pistons are now extended again, so I can just sneak across them and not have to worry about jumping around to uh, risk damaging my crops. Um, so, as you can see, there is a bit of redstone wiring involved here, and I'll actually show you the redstone for the cactus, which is the simpler of the two. If I head down here, past my tree farm, Here's my redstone room, and so you can see we've just got a couple of repeaters here. This lets, lets the design be as compact as it needs to be, because otherwise, uh, if this were just a redstone wire, then it would connect to this one and this one, and it would just be, it wouldn't, it wouldn't actually be facing toward the piston, it would be going behind it, and then it wouldn't activate. Um, so you can get away with N over 2 um, repeaters. And then this just gets connected down through another repeater down to the switch down there. And the one for the wheat farm is not really that much more complicated. It's pretty much exactly the same thing, except uh, the four pistons that form the bridge 
are wired up, uh, as is a piston that exists um, above uh, the apex of the field. Um, one thing that I should mention, if you're trying to replicate this yourself, this wool here, you may have wondered why it looked like it was snowing on my fields here, um, this is necessary. Anything you plant on these spaces will be destroyed because the water will drop straight down onto it instead of sliding across it. Um, this arrangement here is because uh, the way to get the streams parallel when they get down there, which is necessary for everything to get dropped down correctly, uh, is for the water to end up uh, floating, flowing to all of these locations simultaneously. If it picks one preferentially, then it will act as a point source instead of being evenly distributed across the surface. So to do that, because water spreads in a diamond, we just put a diamond pattern below the place where the water comes out. And you can see that right here. The piston's currently extended, but there's a water source block above there. So that is about all there is to see here. Um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them, and I'll do my best to answer. Uh, and if you're wondering where all this is, well, suffice to say you will see soon enough.